Hello everyone and welcome to another FME tutorial. Today we're going to show you how you can use dynamic engines on FME server to help with unpredictable spikes in demand. In this two-part series, we're going to demonstrate how you can use dynamic engines in FME server to relieve queues when they get overloaded. In this first video, one of our tech experts, Holly, is going to walk through a workspace in FME desktop that queries the FME server metrics endpoint, checks if any queues need more engine capacity based on a specified watermark level, and in cases where the queues are overloaded, it will assign dynamic engines to these queues, helping with processing until the queues being monitored return to the low watermark level. In the second video, Holly will then walk through an automation that runs the workspace that we created in this video, and then she'll demonstrate dynamic engines in action. If you want to follow along with this tutorial, you'll need three things. First, the dynamic engines credits. Second, the dynamic engines reassignment workspace. And third, the dynamic engines reassignment automation. You can download a trial of FME server from safe.com to receive 100 free hours of dynamic engines credits, or you can contact sales at safe.com for more information. Keep in mind, this is as of build 20504. It should be noted that dynamic engines are only available in FME 2020.0 or newer. You can download this workspace and automation from FME hub. Both links are in the description box below. Now I'll pass it over to Holly. Thanks, Charles. So the overall aim of this workspace is to monitor FME server job queues using our REST API metrics endpoint. And based on a threshold value that we have configured, reallocate these dynamic engines to help take on the load if any of our queues are starting to build up. This workflow is ideal for managing unpredictable peak workloads in a timely manner. Now let's take a closer look at some of the key components in this workspace. We'll start by taking a look at the user parameters. First, we have our queues to watch. So in this example, we are monitoring the load of just two of our queues, but this can be as many as you like. We are storing this as a simple JSON string. Next, we have our home queue. This is where our dynamic engines live, and they will always be assigned to this queue, whether they are in use or not. There are no repositories assigned to this queue, which is important because it saves us the extra step of having to launch or shut down these engines when they are needed, whilst ensuring we are not eating up the dynamic engine credits unnecessarily. The last two parameters go hand in hand, and these define our high and low watermark. That is, the value at which we will start to reallocate or deallocate our engines from the associated queues. In this workspace, we have the same watermark for all queues. However, you could build a watermark for each queue into a JSON string, just like with our queues. OK, so let's take a look at how we are actually using these parameter values within our workspace. There are four main sections within the workspace that we're going to cover. The first thing that we need to do is using an HTTP caller transformer, we'll call the metrics endpoint of FME server. This will return the entire load of our server at the time the request is made. We then want to use a second REST API call to fetch the name of all of the engines assigned to the home queue by referencing this parameter in the request URL. This response is returned as a string of JSON, so we need to flatten it to expose the different engines in our workspace. We'll repeat this JSON flattening for the queues that we would like to watch. Since these are both stored as a list feature, we'll then explode this information out into attributes that we can use later in our workflow for processing. At this point, we have all of the engines that are available for reallocation and our current server load. The response returned from our metrics endpoint follows the Prometheus open metrics format, so is returned as plain text. Therefore, we are going to use a series of regular expressions in string searches to pass out this information. In this workspace, we've taken the extra step of passing out information on the running jobs as well. Whilst this isn't used in this workspace, it may be handy to have for a future version. We're almost at the end now. First, we need to make use of our watermark parameters to help determine what action we are taking by first using an attribute creator followed by a test filter. Then, based on this, we can route the engines to a final REST API call to either assign or remove each engine from the watched queues. Finally, we are ready to publish this workspace to FME server. From there, it needs to be configured to run via a schedule at a frequent interval which in this example is every seven seconds, so that it can monitor the state of FME server queues continuously. 
Thanks, Holly. In the next video, we'll show how to automate the dynamic engine's reassignment process and see this workflow in action. You can check that video right here, and it'll also be in the description box below. See you in the next one.